Moin! In this episode I'm only electroplating parts of my 3D prints and this time I'm straight up torching the plastic out of the metal. I've always wanted to try it and yep, it actually works. But is it a smart idea? How do you even electroplate and what can go wrong? Stick around and find out in this experiment. I grabbed some casting filament, the kind you're supposed to be able to burn out clearly. You print this PVB just like any normal filament and you can smooth it with isopropanol. So it's basically perfect for me. The catch? It's crazy hydrophilic, which means it lives in the dry box full time. First up on the print bed, me. Yeah, I was going to do this with a friend, but she bailed the moment she saw the first test pieces. So now I'm sitting here with this cringy thing that's supposed to be my likeness, wondering how I made it. Snapped a few photos, ran them through an AI bus generator. There's one on Maker World. Over on the resin side of the lab, I'm firing up my beloved Saturn IV and loading it with casting resin. In theory, you should be able to just burn it out clean, right? Guess we'll find out. I put it in and did a quick exposure test straight on a nitrile glove. Once it cures, it turns deep blue and feels almost like wax. I learned fast that these prints need seriously chunky supports and that the material itself is pretty brittle, but I kinda expected that. After the usual peel off and IPA rinse, I finally cured the Doom Guy bust and I took my sweet time with it. One thing I always take time for, PPE. I've said it in every single video and I'm saying it again, gear up, use PPE every time. All right, so now we've got all these awesome prints ready to go. But before we start electroplating, the PVB prints can still be smoothed with IPA. You can either spray it on and wait, or you can use a vapor polishing machine like this one. Just fill it with isopropanol and then somehow try to get the print inside. It's probably for safety reasons, fully automated and painfully slow. But the machine does exactly what it's supposed to do in the most dramatic way possible. It smooths the print beautifully. Perfect prep for the clean metal finish. Now I'm drilling venting holes into the smooth print so the electrolyte doesn't build up too much pressure inside. I didn't have to do that for the resin print though. And now comes the most important step of electroforming, the conductive paint. I say it again, I use two types of paint that work really well. Copper paint mixed with acetone for airbrush application and as a solid alternative graphite paint. Graphite might even be better, but it's a lot trickier to handle. I've made several videos showing how to mix it. Check out some of the more recent ones if you're curious. Today I'm going with copper again, spraying it on in my airbrush booth. Thin coats, multiple passes, sounds easy in theory, but I know how it goes. You get impatient, go full throttle and suddenly the layer is way too thick. Then it dries weird, ruins the surface and you're back to square one. But if you take your time, it usually turns out great, I promise. Now, electroplating. I've explained this a thousand times already, but maybe this time I'll flesh it out a bit more. First, you need an electrolyte. I almost always use an acidic copper electrolyte because it plates quickly and is inexpensive. It also regenerates itself so I can use it over and over again. Next, you need a tank to hold the bath, plus some polypropylene filter bags. I made these myself. These bags are filled with copper. I just use ordinary copper, but copper DHP works best. And yes, it's important that the copper makes that noise. Just kidding. I put the electrolyte into the tank and add a copper plate at the anode. Over time, the copper dissolves and carries copper ions over to the 3D print. The anode is connected to the positive terminal of a standard bench power supply. Any 0 to 30 volt supply will do as long as it delivers a stable current. Sometimes I use a 5 amp unit, sometimes a 30 amp one, depending on the average amperage I need. I wrap the 3D print with copper wire, rough thumb, create multiple contact points. The wire is connected to the negative terminal. That closes a circuit and continuously pumps copper atoms onto the conductive 3D print. 
Then I hang the part on my rotary jig. The jig keeps the coating even and I also have a stero under the tank for aeration. Fancy, but it gives great results. Current density is crucial. I always aim for about 1 to 1.5 amps per square decimeter and ramp up over 30 minutes from 50% to 100. In the previous video I showed an online surface area calculator for SCLs. You may check that out. Now all the prints go in one after another. This time I electroformed each print for roughly 5 hours, which gives me layers about 240 micrometers thick. So what can I say? They already look great. The parts come out of the bath almost exactly like this. The electrolyte contains an organic brightener. It's well balanced and it works reliably over a wide operating window. Still, even with rotation, there are a few spots it just can't reach geometrically. Polishing works here. Now for the fun part, burning out the casting filament and resin. I use a gas torch for this with all the safety measures in place. Garden hose at the ready and a fireproof tray underneath. Mm -hmm. Torch on and go. The filament burns nicely, but I didn't factor in how quickly the clamps lose their grip. On the plus side, you get a good view of how copper reacts to heat. I'm pretty sure there's a way to freeze those colors, but that's a topic for another episode. In the end, the stable finish is a blue silver patina. On the second piece, Doom Guide Dark Ages Edition, I clearly hadn't learned my lesson. Sometimes it actually hurts to watch myself work. You can see the filament melting right out of the shell. It's super satisfying. I then spent another half hour playing around with the heat induced discoloration. For the casting resin, I ran a small test first. Technically, I'm using it off label and it behaves a bit unpredictably from under the torch. I tried loosening it from the front, then poked it out from the back, but brute force was the only thing that finally worked. It got a little sketchy, but once I quenched it, I could peel it off pretty cleanly. And that, dear friends, is the pitiful end state after the burnout. To get it shiny again, I first have to strip off the oxide layer. Just brush it off with a paintbrush. Then reactivate the copper with an acid. I'm using a galvanic activator for that. Next, the parts go back into the electroplating bath, but this step is much quicker now. My copper anodes are pretty much dissolved at this point, so I have to add fresh ones. While I'm at it, a big thank you to all my channel members for their loyal support. Your names will be immortalized on the new anode. May you live on in the prints. And now look at them. Every shell is gleaming again. Honestly, I didn't quite expect it to turn out this good. Here's a quick weight check to get a sense of it. 90 grams, that's already fairly heavy. Plain copper is a bit boring, so I'm electroplating the big doom guy with nickel. Bad stuff, but it does the job for now. The small doom guy goes straight into a gold bath. Normally I'd plate a nickel barrier layer first, but I'm curious to see whether diffusion will eventually turn it into rosé gold. And here they are, all side by side. I'm quite happy with them, they all look pretty funny and there's a cute effect when you peek in from the back. You can clearly see that the electric field doesn't reach very far into deep recesses. That's down to the electrolyte and I haven't found a fix yet. If anyone knows, I'm all ears. So what uses do you see for this method? Little busts are nice, but am I overlooking some obvious application? Anyway, I had fun with this run and if you enjoyed it too, hit subscribe and let me know what else I should do. By the way, I only do this as a hobby after work, in the basement, alone, as always. These videos take ages to make, so don't be disappointed if there isn't a new one every week. Thanks for watching and tschüss. PPE.